80,000 people gathered in Tel Aviv last week to protest the government's new proposed justice reform plan. They claim that Israel's democracy is at stake, and they're right, just not in the way that you might think. Democracy in the Holy Land could very well go down the drain, just not like these leftist protesters are claiming. Hello and welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of anti-Israel propaganda and Jew hatred, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Happy to have you guys with us as, you, you know, we're still in the new year, so we're, uh, we can still say that. Um, going into 2023, got so many plans to grow and bring you guys lots more content. We're in the midst of filming right now. Wow, so excited for the future. That being said, you guys are going to want to come along for the ride, so if you're watching first time, second, third, whatever it is, and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and we'd love to hear if you're a uh, new viewer down in the comment section below. Guys, check us out on Twitter and Instagram. We wanna grow those pages and we're putting exclusive content out on those platforms that you're not gonna find here on YouTube. Um, one quick note, we have volunteer programs that we conduct here in the heartland of Israel, part of our uh, parent organization, Hayovel. We bring volunteers to experience the land and the people for themselves and help Jewish farmers here in Judea and Samaria. You want to check out our all men's pruning trip at serveisrael.com, link down in the description below. That's coming up next month, but the deadline to apply is uh, very close, so you don't want to delay if you're interested in coming to Israel. And check out all of the other incredible programs that we have planned for 2023. Go to serveisrael.com. If you might be listening right now and you're wondering, wait, uh, didn't you talk about this before? Well, we're going to talk about it again. And uh, the reason is because there's a lot more details coming out. And really, the fact is, is that we're talking about it again because the leftist world brought it up again. So as long as the leftist world thinks that uh, they need to continue bashing Israel for uh, the uh, reforms that are happening, then we'll keep talking about it. And we're going to keep bringing you the actuals. That are, that are the literal things that are happening and not the fake and false news. So we do have a little, uh, just kind of a big bust here. You ready? Ready for the big bust? Everybody thinks that uh, the reforms that are happening here in Israel are going to, are the demise of democracy in the Middle East, uh, in, the, in the nation of Israel. And we're going to show you a graph. Here we go. We're just diving right in here. Pull up this graph. Here we go. We got the graph. Um, we're looking. Okay. Who elects, um, our, our, what, what uh, democratic nations uh, run with the way that Israel is proposing to the reform to be like? So actually, this reform puts Israel um, more like, the United States, Germany, France, Switzerland, Denmark, Spain, Portugal, Belgium, Japan, Netherlands. What? Yeah, really. Israel's the only one out of that whole list of 10 democratic first world nations that uh, that the that, that doesn't elect their. OK, so the, the ju judicial reform that's happening is means that the judges themselves, they elect their they replace themselves. So the judicial reform says, wait, they shouldn't be doing that. Well, in a democratic their, system, you their should elect. Too. Right? Yeah, oh, and then they appoint themselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah. appoint their colleagues. Yeah. yeah. So it's and who, like, who else goes in? They, there's a committee. There's other people in the committee, but it takes, uh, it only, basically, they have the majority. The current justices in the Supreme Court of Israel have the majority to select new justices. So what's happening now is, is that a in a democratic election is you elect somebody, and then that elected somebody decides who's going to be the judges. Well, the that's what happens officials. in all those countries that you just mentioned. Yeah, the you 10 guys saw the graph, right? Dem democratic first world nations operate that way. And out of those 10, you know, the only one that doesn't operate that way is currently Israel. Without the, the reform that's proposed to happen, Israel's the oddball in the democratic world. Believe it? So to give, yeah, a, that's actually give a little background, like several decades ago, um, the Supreme Court was able to, they took advantage of like left wing uh, government that was in power, and they were able to move a lot of the power in Israel to make decisions to the Supreme Court. So it got flawed, ma majorly flawed towards the Supreme Court. So what can they do? They can appoint their own justices, basic, basically appoint their own justices. Um, they can overturn legislation that they think goes against Israel's basic law, which replaces, because Israel does not have a constitution. Um, and they they basically just all powerful. They can negate and void the Knesset, which is elected by the people. So the Supreme Court has so much power and the power is taken out of the hands of the people 
and it can't ever change unless, you know, uh, the current justices by a miracle just appoint somebody that has the total opposite um, uh, partisan view that they have, then it just won't change. It's been going like this for decades. So part of the judicial reform is to fix this to where it would actually bring more checks and balances in so that the government uh, has a say and new justices that are appointed and puts more checks and balances in of, of what's decided, legislation, uh, rule of law, policies, things like that. Luke, as the leftist world uh, continues to hammer Israel, saying that they're the, this new government is the worst thing that's ever happened and they're uh, just harping on these guys like they're horrible people. Guys, we just, I uh, want again, we've talked about this before, but we have to, again, just state the truth. And the truth is, is these 10 democratic first world nations that we've just mentioned are all in alignment with the actual reforms that are happening in Israel. So don't get it wrong, we're, we're not going to harp on this much longer, but we just have to let you know right off the bat here that that's the actual truth that's going on. Now, Luke, the most people are saying, now, how can you guys just say that real simply when there's 80,000 people right. uh, demonstrating also, in the streets of Israel? And also, it's not just people on the left-wing side. There's also fairly conservative people Very few. saying that they're concerned about uh, this judicial reform. So, like, obviously, we have to take it seriously, and that's another reason why we're talking about it. Again, is uh, what's actually happening here. 80,000 yeah. people in a country of 10 million. Now, that's a uh, significant. I, I would clarify, Luke, and ben, uh, but I think the, out of the 80,000 that were gathered in the streets of Tel Aviv, I would assume most of those, and we will show you a clip here of the uh, 80,000 and what's there, I'm assuming most of these are not in the conservative crowd. This bunch of people that gathered there were more of your Israel haters, believe well, it or we'll not. Put, we'll put the clip up on the screen. Just ask you guys. Use your eyes. What do you see? What are you looking at in this crowd of 80,000 people? In case you just don't know or don't recognize those flags, those are PLO flags. Palestinian Liberation Organization flags. Okay? My question is, what in the world does this judicial reform have to do with the PLO <laughs> or the Palestinian Authority or even the Palestinian issue? Right. What in the world? It's supposed to be talking about Israel's democracy for judicial reform, a lot of it having to do with Israel's Supreme Court doesn't have anything to do with the Palestinian issue, PLO, PA. So why why in the world? And I mean, you're, you're not just seeing a couple flags. You're seeing tons and tons of PLO flags. That tells you who a good chunk of this uh, massive crowd of people actually are. Right. And, are, and Luke, I would say they're not worried about the, dem the, the right. collapse of the democracy in Israel. That's not their concern. What they're concerned about is more of a political regime. What they're seeing, their, their political regime and the fall of that political entity with a strong pro-Israel government, there's no hope of, did you see those Palestinian flags waving? Hopefully that will be absolutely illegal. You should not be able to wave in, enemy flags, enemy flags yeah, I mean, in the country. That's here. called treason. Yeah. And anybody should be dealt with that actually sides with the enemy more than they do their own home country. So we have 80,000 people that are siding with a with a two-state solution. They're siding with a pro-Arab state, uh, I would say a, a 23rd Arab state, when there's already 22 Arab states in the world. Again, we've harped on this. Why do you have to have the 23rd Arab state just happen to be right inside the boundaries of Israel? Guys, it makes absolute no sense. But you have Israelis that are actually... Uh, you know what? They're actually uh, pressured to want to uh, appease the leftist hater world. And that's, a, that's, you know, it's just what it is. But you also have a lot of non-Israelis, I'm assuming, in this crowd as well. You have a lot, I would assume, based off of other things, that there's millions of dollars going into that funnel. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those people that came even were paid to be there. Would, that would not surprise me one lick. I mean, well, come also, on, we saw what happened in America. Yeah. Uh, those kind of people, they're paid to be there. So I would not be surprised at all with the crowd that large that the leftists are paying off a massive chunk to try to get, get a crowd. So I have a New Year's resolution proposition for you, which I'm betting you haven't thought of yet. The world wants you to boycott Israeli products that are produced in what they call the Occupied West Bank. Want to know how you can fight that? Join the Heartland Challenge. Pick one item that you use on a regular basis and commit to only purchasing that item from Israel's biblical heartland. In your face, BDS. If you're wondering how in the world you can purchase a product that you use every day from Israel's heartland, Blessed by Israel makes it super easy for you. Blessed by Israel is a company started by good friends of ours. They source incredible boutique products from small businesses located in Judea and Samaria, and they ship those products straight to your doorstep. We've partnered with Blessed by Israel to promote the Heartland Challenge, encouraging supporters of Israel all around the world to commit to using certain products only from Judea and Samaria. So whether it's olive oil, tea, soap, ceramics, or something else, Blessed by Israel is encouraging everyone to buy what you believe in. 
and then share that message with your community and friends. It's time to build and invest in the heartland of Israel. Join the Heartland Challenge and start making a difference today. Go to blessedbuyisrael.com. Again, that's blessedbuyisrael.com or click the link down in the description below. Don't just buy Israel, buy blessed by Israel. Use the code invest at checkout for $5 off your first order. Well, I also want to bring out something that I, I was surprised at when I found out today. And that is, I thought that a lot of government leaders were at this protest. There were, you know, for, well, anyways, let's get into it. Who actually attended in the leaders? Like, I thought there was members of Knesset sitting in the current government, people in the opposition. Um, basically, people that were there were people that were in the government, politicians years and years ago. Some of them haven't been in a, a political office for more than 10 years. Um, there was a few MKs in, uh, that barely passed the threshold in the last election. So like um, uh, merits that barely crawled past the threshold. And then there was somebody from a party that didn't even make it in the last election. You, you know who didn't show up? <laughs> Yair Lapid, Benny Gantz. You know why? Well, here's a good guess anyways. Um, their government that just was removed from power, that just lost an election, actually pushed for some of the very same judicial reforms. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, nobody protested those that we know of. Um, it's rumored that Lapid might go to this weekend's protest because they're going to try and do it again. But again, again, who's showing up? People that aren't in office, um, people that used to be politicians, people that weren't elected in the last um, election. So I want to say one other thing, and this is really significant. Yep. 80,000 people, again, that's a ton of people for a country of 10 million citizens Shouldn't we still pay attention and be concerned? I think Bibi Netanyahu, the current prime minister, said it best. He said, quote, two months ago, there was a huge demonstration in Israel, the mother of all demonstrations. Millions of people took to the streets to vote in the elections. One of the main issues they voted for is the reform in the judicial system. So again, he said it best. You think 80,000 people is a lot? Well, how about millions and millions of people that actually voted for the current government and voted for the government because they wanted to see these judicial reforms. Uh, direct polls for Channel 14 here in Israel, they issued poll results that they took about this very issue. And guess what? The Israeli public overwhelmingly supports the judicial reforms. So 80,000 people are not. I've heard, uh, I saw a lot of comments last week on a video that said, ah, there's no way there was that many people there. It's very possible. Um, overwhelmingly, the public actually supports these reforms. Luke, I think the last uh, big thing that people are talking about, and this actually pulls the full scale of what the actual topic is, because this is li literally what's happening now is a facade for a, a, a different attack. As you just, Luke, you just mentioned, there's politicals on the opposition, uh, political uh, uh, people on the opposition to the current Israeli government that weren't even involved with this because they actually uh, push forward the same kind of things in their, when they were in government. So what we have right now, and this really pulls it into frame, the people are saying it's going to be an ep, ep, uh, economic uh, problem that Israel does these reforms. And you say, why, why, how would this affect the economy? Well, uh, they're saying this, and I'll just quote for an example. Here's, here's, here's a, a couple examples for us. Uh, Barack Elam is a uh, CEO of a uh, uh, billions of shekel uh, uh, company here in Israel, operates in 30 different countries. And so it's very global. And Israel, I'm telling you, Israel has a very successful uh, high tech world and it's it's in almost every country. And so you have a massive uh, amount of influence in the, in the economic world. And they're concerned because when Israel makes pro-Israel stances, so a pro-Israel government comes in, and it sounds ironic to say a pro-Israel government because the last government wasn't pro-Israel. So I, that's kind of weird to say, but that's what's going on. But, but the nations prefer Israel to be actually against itself. Uh, that's what the international community at large would prefer. So when Israel has a pro-Israel, pro-building uh, up its, its own country and, and its self-interest, uh, they see a problem with that. And so that affects these companies. How does that affect these companies? This is the example for us. This is the exact example. Norway, Sovereign Wealth Fund, just a month ago, stated that they will be reviewing their Israeli investments uh, and may halt them entirely due to the Israeli banks involvement in so-called West Bank settlements. Now, 
Uh, that's I, I think that's a good example for us because the world at large is saying they're not they're not pro Israel being in its heartland and its homeland, Judea, Jerusalem, uh, Samaria areas. The world says they shouldn't be there, and so that affects these big companies because pl- pe- people like Norway are saying we're going to boycott as long as Israel is pro Judea and Samaria and these these pl- these holy uh, biblical places that are just littered throughout the Bible. If Israel has connections to its biblical heritage, we're going to boycott that. And so the big companies say uh, we should we should pull back away from that uh, because that's going to affect our businesses. So the fact is, is that these judicial reforms and all these things, it has nothing to do. The leftists aren't concerned about how Israel operates its government. What they're concerned about, the leftist world, uh, the Israelis, maybe some of the ones that showed up at this, this rally even, what they're concerned about is, is the fact that the world is going to disapprove of Israel and the way Israel operates its government and therefore is going to hate them. That's what they're actually concerned about. Well, they're I think, concerned uh, about the world hating them. Well, just in this example, they're saying they're saying that uh, Norway's sovereign wealth fund is going to review Israeli investments and may halt them in, due to Israeli banks' involvement in West Bank settlements. I just want to translate that because it might sound like a bunch of uh, mumbo jumbo. They're saying they're going to potentially halt their involvement with Israeli investments because Israeli banks do business with Israeli citizens. That's what in they're Judea saying. In Samaria. Yeah, because. Then when they talk about banks' involvement with West Bank settlements, they're talking about 700,000 Israeli, or no, 800,000 Israeli citizens that live in Judea and Samaria that have a bank account. And they're saying, we're going to hold our business with you because you choose to do business with your own citizens who happen to live in your heartland. Luke, can I say there's one reason why the last government was uh, was was kicked out of uh, office and voted out. I mean, they weren't kicked out because that's not democratic. They were voted out. I don't know if you guys, uh, that, that's, that's a democratic nation when you have elections and it actually uh, follows through what the elected process was. And so they were, a leftists were elected out. And one reason I think the leftists were elected out uh, is because I believe they're not so concerned with the best and the, 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 the best thing for the country. Now, that may sound pretty uh, straightforward, but in, in light of what we've just talked about, I think they're more concerned with the international community's happiness with the decisions they're making. So are they making the decisions based on what the people of Israel desire and what they need and how they can best function? Or are they trying to make an international, I'm telling you, the international world hates Israel. So if you're trying to appease that international uh, hating group, you'll never win. But that's the leftist uh, ideological hold is to try to somehow appease those leftist haters. I mean, come on, go to Norway and just see what kind of Israel loving embrace you get. No, there's been a lot of pretty bad things that have come out of Norway for Israel. So for a for an, uh, uh, an employer that's saying, I, I'm scared about this thing. Yeah. So the end of the day, guys, it's really about Israel being strong. And when Israel is strong and says to Norway, sorry, we're going to be strong and we're going to uh, operate in our land just as we will do it. And we don't really care what you say, because this is not your land. This is our land. Then there'll be some actual respect. And that's the way Israel is going to be afford and be be respectable nation not as the leftists dream it, to, to be uh, subservient to the leftist uh, Israel-hating regimes across the world, but to actually rule over it and say, no, we're going to be our own nation here in our homeland. We're going to be strong, and we're going to run and operate our country as we best see fit. And that's what the people elected in. So whether there's 80,000 people in the streets of Tel Aviv, uh, that pales to comparison to the millions, as Luke just mentioned, that just voted in these reforms to happen. So guys, don't be deceived by all the things that you're seeing on the media and all the leftists. Uh, everybody's bent on trying to make Israel look bad and all these things. But the fact is, is that Israel's becoming stronger and the government, these reforms and all these things that are happening are a good thing for the nation of Israel. Don't be confused about it. Josh, there's uh, one more thing I got to say about this issue. And I found this actually a little bit funny and I, I think it's relevant um, because obviously, who who is the most upset about these proposed judicial reforms? Yeah, the people, us. no, the, the Supreme Court justices, <laughs> right? right? The yeah, current Supreme Court. Yeah, like, why would they be? They would be upset. So, okay, so obviously they're making a big stink um, because they're they're uh, uh, they don't want changes to the court system um, because for decades the courts had the courts have had a stranglehold on, on Israel's legislation, constitution, ultimately their democracy. But I was looking at something I didn't think it was relevant, and then all of a sudden it, it clicked on me. Um, another reason why current Supreme Court justices don't like these changes is uh, potentially because of this. I just uh, found there was an article about how much people that work in the government make in a salary, right? Okay, so the Prime Minister of Israel receives about $200,000 a year in a salary. 
by comparison, I think that's about how much a congressman or a senator in the U.S. makes. Uh, the president of the United States gets about four hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, members of Knesset they make about one hundred and seventy. If you're a minister in the uh, Knesset, you make about one hundred and eighty-seven, close to one hundred and ninety. Okay. Supreme Court Justice Esther Hayut receives. Are you ready for it? Three hundred and eighty-four thousand dollars in salary every year. Mm. That's almost equivalent to the president of the United States. So, bottom line, yeah, the Supreme Court is very happy with the things, the way things currently run. They make way more money than anyone else in the government. They're corrupt because they can strike down any legislation that they want, uh, that they decide that the Knesset passes, and they get to appoint their own colleagues, their own justices, making sure that the court system remains partisan for decades. More to come. Making sure that the court has keeps that stranglehold so they can do whatever they want. And uh, it's never going to change, you know, as far as their opinions and the way they interpret the law. Right? So you're saying there's this unelected body of people inside the Israeli government, the boss around the prime minister. Well, and they can overturn the Knesset. They can. They just they they have a complete uh, it's a dictatorship. It's and again, not democracy. And That's again, back to the f first of the show. Remember that graph we're talking about? Most of the countries in the world, democratic first world countries, do not operate this way. That's not the democratic way America works. Uh, we can go through that whole list of 10 different countries. Uh, Germany, France, Switzerland, Denmark, uh, Spain, Portugal, Belgium, J Japan, and the Netherlands. None of them work that way. So the, these judicial reforms that are happening are actually putting Israel in a more democratic governing system, not less, more. Israel's becoming more democratic. So uh, again, let's uh, let's get it straight, guys. Okay, guys, uh, we're, we're done ranting about democracy. We got to wrap up, but just a little bit of good news, things that the government's actually doing that are good. Um, so two terrorists were released from prison after serving 40 years um, in the last week and a half. Um, so the second guy, Mahir Yunus, was involved in murdering IDF soldier Avraham Bromberg in 1980. He was released this week. Um, he was about to go have a major celebration. His pl family was planning it. There was like thousands of people that were like signed up to come to this celebration. And uh, guess what? Itamar Ben Gavir said, "No way. We're not. Uh, we're not allowing a a party with thousands of people in attendance to celebrate a terrorist, a murderer that was just released from prison after 40." years um and you might be thinking he served his sentence what's the big deal well guess what he said when he got out of prison he said quote i expect to meet the palestinian masses i wait for the moment that i will be free after years behind bars i'm excited to see the young generation full of values awareness and knowledge um and to bring it all home his brother who was also released earlier um and did actually have a big celebration um, including flying PLO flags in uh, in association with the uh, with terrorism, he said, "quote After he got released, quote I'm prepared to sacrifice another 40 years for the freedom of our people. My consolation is that today prisoners are united against the barbarity of the occupation. In other words, these two guys that murdered an IDF soldier 40 years or 40 something years ago served 40 years in prison, got out, and are trying to hold a massive party with thousands of people attending. Guess what they're saying?" I would do it all over again. I'll absolutely do it again. And you know what? It's possible they will try to commit more terrorist attacks, even though they just served 40 years in prison. They're saying, I'm as committed to this cause as as, as ever, as much as ever. And if 3,000 people come to my party celebrating me getting out of prison, I'm going to encourage them all to go out and murder Jews. And you know what else is crazy? These guys are Arab Israeli citizens. These are not Palestinian Authority citizens. These are Arab Israelis. But guess what? The government is not uh, giving in. Itamar ben Gavir, the new internal public security minister, ordered the Israeli police to actually uh, stop any massive celebrations upon their release. And he said, quote, this is a test of our sovereignty, adding, we must in no way allow the serious offenses of encouraging and supporting terrorism anywhere in the state of Israel. So good news coming out of the land, guys. Just again, I know we've been talking about this democratic issue so much in the last uh, week or so, but just... Don't believe the mainstream media uh, and the reports and pay attention to what's actually happening for yourself. I've seen messages from liberals, from conservatives. People have written to us. They've uh, written comments. Don't believe the mainstream media. Look it up for yourself. Um, guys, don't forget to sign up for the Heartland Challenge at blessedbyisrael.com. Link in the description below. Time to make a difference for the land and people of Israel's heartland. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe if you're listening on podcast platforms. 
and get that conversation going down below. Tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We're here every single week with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.